All right. So this is Spare Plumber from Robots Everywhere, and I am going to show you how to increase the power of the voltage regulators that you can get for cheap on Amazon, like the LM2596 or the XL4005. So this is what it looks like normally. Uh, it comes with a little heat sink here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to couple two of them together. Now, why would you want to do that? You want to do that because it gives you more current. The LM2596 is rated at 3 amps. The 4005s are rated at 5 amps. One simple trick that you can apply is that you can use two chips of the same type on the same circuit to get more current. Now, one thing it will not do is give you twice the current. That's just it's just not it's just not how the physics of it work however if let's say that you've got a um, 2906 a uh, 2506 20, 2506 it gives you three amps and you need four uh, what can you do you can either redesign everything which is a pain in the ass or you can cheat a little bit and exploit the simple fact that you can thermally couple two, two similar chips to increase the total current. Now this is not going to, again, this is going to give you maybe an, an extra amp, extra amp and a half. So don't overuse it. Okay, that's enough of me yapping. Module. First thing you want to do is you want to actually get rid of the chip on the module. And the reason for this is that you can only do this coupling trick from chips that have come out that you know that have come out from the same factory and the same batch. So we got a bunch here. You can you know you can, you can just reuse these later. You can uh, mix them, mash them, but you want to start with you want to make sure that you buy five of these from the same guy. You mix and match between between those. You buy a bunch of these from the same guy. You mix and match between between those. Otherwise, what will happen is that there will be more variance between components. One of the two chips will be doing ninety five percent of the work because that's just the physics of it, and you will have achieved nothing. So the first thing we do is we get rid of the chip here. Easiest way to do it: get a big soldering iron. jam it through here on the side maybe add a little bit of solder you know what you probably see what i'm doing better if i hold this in the other direction there we go maybe not Compromise, eh? I particularly want to give people a view of my fat tummy, but there we go. So, what you're doing is that you're heating up the chip. Now, don't worry, these are very resistant to heat, so you can do this. Again, you want to use like a beefy, you know, a beefy uh, soldering iron for this. Then you lift. Once it's nice and liquid, you lift the chip. And we can just lift it up, kind of jack it like this. There we go. Now you don't want to mess up the underlying circuit too much, of course. Once you have achieved this. You just lift it, and the now you're supposed to desolder these, but I find that you're gonna need one of these things to be broken off. So might as well make this one the one that you break off, and just you know just wiggle it until it breaks off. Easiest way to do it. It actually hurts a bit because 
This thing is still really warm. But... See, I try to make my videos only one take because I want to make sure that that way people... If I'm showing something running, that way people know there's no trickery. Okay, now you gotta get rid of the leftovers. You gotta get rid of the little feet there. So for that, you use a regular soldering iron. You just kind of push them off. Use a solder sucker. Use a use a wick. Use whatever you want. Doesn't matter. I just kind of scrape them off like this. All right. Now this guy matches this guy. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take this take this thing here, bend the pins out, just like this. The important part is that this should be nice and horizontal. Also, there shouldn't be any crud on the side on the side here. See? We left a little solder bubble there, so that's gonna go. And there we go. So these should be nice and perpendicular. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. These should be nice and perpendicular. Uh, another thing is that on these circuits, usually two of the pins of these chips are connected together on the board. If you look at the board, uh, for the uh, for the 4005, it's these two. It's the last two. I believe that for the 2506, it's uh, the middle two, but I'm not actually sure. Don't have it memorized. Either way you're gonna have to connect this guy pin to pin and on the two pins that are together you're gonna make a nice little solar blob because the point here is to make sure that these two circ these two chips can transfer heat between each other nicely and reliably that's pretty much what you care about here because if they can transfer heat between each other they will tend to stay at the same temperature. Now, when, the, when they're running, this kind of thing has a slightly negative co temperature coefficient. So we're going to exploit that for as much as we can. So the next step is obviously to just solder the pins one by one, one to one. And I'm going to have to do it like this because there isn't exactly a lot to show here. Now, one thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to recalibrate the voltage for this guy. Again, if you can, don't be afraid to leave a little solder blob. Go heavy on the solder. You want the you want the heat to flow between the between the two between the metal connectors too. So be abundant in your soldering. Don't cause shorts, obviously, but don't be afraid to make a little solder blob. This will give you more. There we go. This will give you better thermal conductivity, which for this kind of hack to work is almost as important as electrical conductivity. See, this is what it should look like. I'm missing one pin. Give me a moment. Now, if you can get a custom heatsink for these guys, hold the merrier. But if you can't, no worries. You can use the little you can use the little guys here. So this is what it should look like. Note that the these two pins are connected together. Again, this is for the 4005. For the LM2596, I think it's another pair. Of, it's a different pair of pins, but you get the idea. So the next thing you do is you take advantage of the fact that you've got these nice straight angle between the two chips add heat paste maybe put a bit of super glue under it if you need to and you thermally connect them with the heat sink push down a bit use the fact that you've got a bit of spring ash in between the pins push it down again maybe put a bit of super glue here what you should have is a module which looks a lot like the original and again this does not this did not double your current capacity however it does increase it you you should get an extra amp amp and a half which you know can be good for various projects so that's the end of the video 
And this has been uh, Spear Plumber from uh, Robots Everywhere. Have fun, safe hacking.